Welcome to April episode of Special Olympics Rhode Island Magazine. Hi, my name is Ian Shepard. This month, Brian Goldberger and Kayla Delanhenty will talk with us about our 2024 State Summer Games down at URI. Jackson Lynn Dre will talk about his experience participating in Unified Championship Schools and Capitol Hill Day. Our president and CEO, Ed Pacheco, will highlight the crucial role volunteers play in our organization. And Michael Bullock will share his favorite memories as part of our 30th anniversary celebration of Special Olympics Rhode Magazine. Now sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. Welcome back to Special Olympics Rhode Magazine. My name is Tim Reddy. Joining me today is Brian Goldberger, who is our Summer Games Director, and Kate Delaney, who is the athlete representative on the Games Ministry. Welcome to the show. Thank you for having us. Thank you, Henry. Brian, can you touch here when the, and where our state summer games will be? Yes, absolutely. First of all, thank you so much for, for having us here. Thank you. Uh, it's an honor to be on this stage with a legend like Henry. Um, <laughs> uh, the state games will be back at URI again this year, uh, May 31st, June 1st, and June 2nd. That is great. Kayla, what team do you participate on and what sports are you going to compete in? Um, I am part of Newport County YMCA Sharks team and for URI I'm doing swim. What sports do you do? Um, I do soccer, basketball, um, volleyball, bowling, you name it, I'm in it. That's good. <laughs> Can you both explain what your role is on the games management team and what your responsibilities are? Sure, yeah, I'll go first. So uh, I'm the games director for, for the state summer games. Um, the responsibilities are, it, it's a lot of coordination. So, you know, we have over a thousand, thousand athletes, uh, over a thousand volunteers. So obviously trying to get all those people coordinated, all the resources that we need uh, lined up you know, together in sync for that weekend, you know, it takes a lot of work. We have over 90 people on our games management team that help put this whole weekend together. So lining all those people up and what they need um, is basically what my role is. Um, in addition to that, it, it's really gathering feedback, which Kayla will talk about in a little bit, but uh, taking that feedback, everything that we hear, um, and then turning that into actionable results, things that we can all work to. We, we, we always want to make the games as you know, memorable and better each year, constantly we improving. We hope a nice weather, too. Yeah, hopefully. We need good weather. No rain. We had a lot of challenges last year. Yes. Brian, can you give me an overview of the competition schedule for summer games weekend? Uh, Ka did Kayla want to share what, what she does on the games management team as well? Yeah, my responsibility is to um, get feedback and to help the games management with like surveys for athletes and whatever else comes with that. That is great. <laughs> Kayla, why is athlete feedback important to the games management team and how do you gather the feedback? We. Um, the feedback is important because we know what we're doing right and what we need to work on better and we get the feedback between um, our surveys and when people are coming up to me and telling me what um, we can do better, what didn't work, what mm. worked and um, the feedback is so important to us. Yeah, please uh, reiterate that during the weekend, please find those surveys whether they're in paper, on the digital kiosk that we had last year. It, it only helps us get better every year. Or you can find one of us with a, uh, yes. a keyboard to help fill out. Brian, can you share with me what you'll be different about Summer Games this year? Yeah, um, so competition-wise, we have a couple of just minor changes. Um, our field and track uh, will be uh, changed up just a little bit so we have a little bit more rest time between relays. Um, there's gonna be an additional uh, bowling session on Good. Friday, just because it's grown so much, so to accommodate all that. Um, in addition to that, Ken, as we were talking before about our role on the games management team, 
there's um, certain areas that we want to focus on. So in general, kind of the layout and everything will be pretty much the same. But if I had to put it anyway else, it'll kind of be bigger and better. That is um, great. The three things that we kind of really want to focus on this year uh, was uh, athlete experience. Um, so one of those being opening ceremonies. We've enlisted uh, a consultant called XPL that actually ran the USA Games in Seattle, the, uh, the opening ceremonies of USA Games. Um, so we just had a first kickoff meeting with them. Uh, so that's been going great. We want to make that real experiential experience. And, that is and, great. And uh, the, the second area, yeah, the second area we're working on is uh, venue coordination. Obviously, it was a big challenge coming back from COVID over the last two years, having a full mm. three-day event. Uh, so we're enlisting a lot more support for our venue directors. We're going to have a, a liaison, a person that really can help them with all the uh, ancillary needs that they have. So uh, they don't have to worry about getting water, getting extra volunteers, running yeah. out of metals, anything like that. They'll have additional help just to kind of support those needs to hopefully make the athlete experience better, the volunteer experience better, um, and just an overall uh, more rounded uh, event in that. And then the third part that we're really focused on is Olympic Village, and that's coming from a lot of the feedback that we have uh, had from last year. There was obviously a lot of challenges with the weather going on, it going mm -hmm. from, I think it was 75 one day to you know low 65. 60, yeah, 65 yeah. the next day. Windy, tents going everywhere. Yep. Um, so we're gonna enlist some more resources for that. Uh, we want to have more of a, a celebratory event, yep. make it a real event to go to, um, and making sure that. When you're not out there competing, you have uh, great resources, fun things to do, and just make it a great weekend for everybody. Okay, one well, of the theme options of the Athlete Social this year, what is the deadline for Athletes to vote? The themes are Under the Sea, Rock Around the World, and Pajama Party, and it, voting is up to April 12th. That is great. Brian, can you give me an overview of the competition schedule of Summer Games weekend? Yeah, absolutely. So. We kick it off on actually Friday morning. We'll have bowling this year. Um, and then into Friday afternoon, we have our, our track and field events. On Saturday, we'll continue with bowling, track, and field. Uh, Saturday, we'll also have a unified soccer, soccer skills. Um, and then on Sunday, we'll have powerlifting and aquatics. That is great. Last question, how can someone register to, to volunteer during Summer Games weekend? Yeah, if you go to specialolympicsri.org, uh, there will be volunteer opportunities there. I assume by the time we, uh, we air this, it'll be uh, the full list of events will be open and you can sign up for sessions on Friday, Saturday, or Sunday. Well, on behalf of Special Olympics Magazine, we thank you both for being on the show. We have more Special Olympics Magazine for exciting messages. Welcome back to Special Olympics for Island Magazine. My name is Ryan Fleming. Wow, I can't believe we're already in the, in the month of April. That means it's time for some warmer weather and say sayonara to winter season. Today I am joined with the Unified Champion School student out of Burrowville High School. It's Mr. Jackson Landry. Hello. Jackson, welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you for having me. Awesome, no problem. I mean, so Jackson, what sports do you participate in at Burrowville High School? So at Burrowville High School, I do unified volleyball, unified basketball, and I'm also a volleyball bachelor. Wow, that's awesome. I mean, like it's, those are really great sports to participate in. Unified volleyball, unified basketball, and even varsity wrestling. That's amazing. Like, you, like it's a lot of good sports to participate in your school. So. I understand that you have been involved with the Unified Champion School. Can you talk to us briefly about your involvement with the UCS? Yeah, so I've been involved with UCS for seven years now. And over the years, I have accumulated a lot of networking opportunities. And it was really great too go meet older people like in oh. high school and all that. That's amazing. I mean, sure it sounds like you had a great uh, Unified Champion School experience. I, I could see that. Um, good for you. So 
During your time with the Unified Champion School, have you made a lot of friendships? I have made a lot of friendships. A bunch of those friendships came from doing Unified Sports. That's awesome. I mean, it, that is definitely terrific to have more friends than Maria. That's the whole purpose of Unified Champion Schools, to make a lot of new friends. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. So, I understand that you went to Washington, D.C. for a special day called Capitol Hill Day. Can you talk with us about your experiences at Capitol Hill Day, representing the state of Rhode Island, obviously? Uh, so I went down there. I got to meet a bunch of people you wouldn't meet. I got to meet people from Pennsylvania all over the country. The first day I did all that. The second day I met with, um, Senator Reed's office, we got a private tour of the Capitol Hill. That's awesome. I mean, uh, I mean, it's just, it's a great way to like have a great experience with the uh, Unified Champion School and the Capitol Hill Day. I mean, meeting a lot of senators, meeting a lot of uh, congressmen, that's amazing. Yeah. You get to share stories. I mean, you name it. So yeah. that's, so Jackson. Yeah. Tell me in your own words, why is inclusion so important to you? Inclusion is so important to me because I want to have, it doesn't matter how I speak or talk or how I sound, I want to be included. I, you will never hear me say, I give up. I like to be treated like I'm a normal person and I love when people do that. That is absolutely amazing. I mean, inclusion is a great way to use inclusion, especially in a great organization like Special Olympics or in a great way with Unified Champion Schools. That's amazing. So speaking of inclusion, so my final question to you is any advice you want to share with other high school students about getting involved with Unified Champion Schools? Doesn't matter if it's an athlete or Unified Partner. Just uh, do you have any advice for them? For those viewers watching? Um, I do. Um, you never really know what Unified Sports and Unified in general is until you try it because I met so many people throughout Unified. That's absolutely a great advice to share, especially for those who are watching at home. Um, I mean, if you want to be involved with Unified Champion School, just be involved. That's what it is. Um, especially really good way to join Unified Champion School. Yeah. So Jackson, on behalf of the entire crew, I want to appreciate you for being on the show and sharing your story with the Unified Champion School. Thank so thank you so much for being part of the show. Thank you for having me. No problem, best of luck to you. And best of luck to you guys. We'll be right back after these exciting messages. Welcome back to Special Olympics Rhode Island Magazine. My name is Bill Guy. Joining me now is Ed Pacheco, President and CEO of Special Olympics Rhode Island. Today we are going to discuss the important roles of volunteers play in the success of Special Olympics Rhode Island, highlights uh, an important volunteer campaign that is underway. Welcome, hey, Ed. Hey, Bill. How are you? Good Thank to be you. with you. Thank you. Ed, let's begin by talking about the crucial role of volunteers play in making Special Olympics Rhode Island so successful and so meaningful to athletes. About how many volunteers does it take each year to pull off all the sports programs, sports competitions, fundraising, and other initiatives that happen through Special Olympics Rhode Island? 
Bill, that's a great question. First off, uh, let me say t thank you to all the volunteers at home that are watching this. Uh, if it wasn't for our volunteers, we wouldn't be able to provide programming 365 days a year. I wanna, I wanna stress that, all year round uh, for our amazing athletes like yourself. Uh, case in point, uh, Bill, you just went up to New Hampshire and were a part of the Winter Games uh, yes. with our friends up in uh, Special Olympics New Hampshire. Uh, and we had about a you know half a dozen volunteers accompanying all the athletes that had a chance to compete in alpine uh, s sports as well as snowshoeing. And what a phenomenal experience, right? You had a yeah. great time. Well, we sent up a staff person, our friend Greg Wright, who I think we're going to hear from uh, either today or the next episode about the work that's happening in programming. Uh, but that wouldn't be possible with our volunteers. Uh, and that's just one example, you know, where we're sending up, you know close to 20 athletes to go up and compete in New Hampshire uh, and, and have an amazing experience in addition to certainly the season long winter sports season that we offer here in Rhode Island. Uh, but that's for every sport, that's for every season here at Special Olympics Rhode Island. So, you know, all throughout the year, as you know, uh, spring, summer, fall and winter, we're offering over 23 sports uh, for athletes. Uh, and of course, we rely on our volunteers and on an annual basis, you ready? Mm -hmm. We have around 5,000 volunteers that help us uh, at Special Olympics Rhode Island. Wow. Now, you may see you know, a, you know, a, a bunch of different volunteers through the teams that you participate in, but just at summer games alone, we'll have anywhere from 1,500 to 1,800 volunteers help us between Friday, wow. Saturday, and Sunday of the summer games. So, we like to, you know, there's 14 staff, 12 full-time, two part-time at Special Olympics Rhode Island. There's no way for 14 people to work with 4,000 athletes and do it to the exceptional level that we do. It's our volunteers that make that possible. They're the coaches, assistant coaches, the folks helping set up events and certainly uh, put events away and the equipment and so forth. Uh, but they're the amazing magic that helps us uh, pull off all the incredible sports and competitions that we do throughout the year. And they do it all for you. From what I'm hearing from you, Special Olympics Rhode Island would not exist today without the time, energy, and commitment of our volunteers. What kinds of roles do you, do volunteers play for our organization? Well, again, as we were talking about a moment ago, um, our volunteers do a whole bunch of different things uh, to help uh, the magic, as we talk about, uh, happen here at Special Olympics Rhode Island. And just a few examples I mentioned, so our coaches, uh, and we, when we talk about coaches, they could be a coach for a particular sport uh, or athletics uh, that we're offering, or they could be a coach for, as you know, Bill, for a team uh, overseeing a number of different activities uh, for, for, could be 10 athletes, could be upwards of 100 athletes. Uh, we have all different you know, sizes of teams, and so uh, our coaches are phenomenal. Um, actually, we were just meeting not too long ago at the coaches conference preparing for the summer games, and uh, we had about a hundred in between two nights. We had, we had so many coaches, we had divided it between two nights. Wow. We had close to 150 coaches come out to get ready for the summer games. And they, if there's only one group more excited the summer, for the summer games, and that's our athletes. Wow. Uh, but the coaches are pretty excited too. So yeah. coaching, absolutely top of the list. If folks are interested in coaching, we, and we encourage them to reach out to us, specialolympicsri.org. Or, as always, give us a call, 401-349-4900. But if, you know, if coaching's not your thing, come out and volunteer for an event. And as I mentioned, you know, for summer games, we count on thousands of volunteers to come out, and they're doing everything from helping us set up for you know, track and field, uh, for powerlifting, uh, you name it, Olympic Village. All those uh, different venues require a number of different um, you know, pieces of equipment as well as signage, among other things, to make that environment and experience exceptional for our athletes. Uh, and of course, you can help out with any of the events we have all throughout the year. So really, dep doesn't really matter how much time you have available. If you can commit you know, three hours a week, you could be a unified partner uh, and come out and do bowling with some of our athletes uh, in any one of our teams. If you have more time to give, come out and coach. Uh, be part of any one of the sports. If you're a football fan, you can do flag football and, and compete alongside as a partner, or you could even coach a team. Um, really, the sky's the limit. 
What I tell everybody, if you're looking for that opportunity to be inspired, if you're looking for that opportunity to have your life change and change the lives of others, that happens every day at Special Olympics. And, I, and, I, and I'm fortunate, I'm humble because I get to be alongside people like yourself. And I see what you're capable of when someone believes in you. Uh, and there's no better gift uh, than volunteering for Special Olympics. What kind of commitment do volunteers have to make if they want to help out? Is it a long-term commitment or a short, short-term commitment? Or can it be either? Another great question. And the short answer is either, right? So we have, I'll tell you, when I, so Bill, believe it or not, how long do you think I've been with Special Olympics? Guess. Working or volunteer? Uh, working. <laughs> Two years. Uh, look, see that? Yeah. May will be my second anniversary. And uh, so I had the pleasure of joining the organization right before the 2022 Summer Games. And I remember meeting a whole litany of, of different volunteers to make up the games management team. And uh, tonight we're going to hear from our friend Brian Goldberger, uh, who is one of the members of games management. And you asked, is it a long-term commitment or a short-term commitment? Well, great example. Brian Goldberger is a second generation director of games management. He loves Special Olympics so much, he's been coming since he was a toddler and now his children come. And he wow. met his wife volunteering at the Summer Games as a member of games management. Wow. So not only did he get the good fortune of, of being a part of his family experience and building on that legacy of giving back to Special Olympics, he's an example of how our community and our family, it had such a major impact on his own family. Um, and so Brian's in for the long haul, so there's yeah. the long-term commitment. <laughs> but on the flip side, we have volunteers that are college students that are coming out and they're helping us out for area games or summer games. And they may volunteer with us one or two days uh, out of their college life. Um, and we appreciate those volunteers as well because, as we both know, uh, whether it's a basketball tournament or a volleyball tournament, uh, it really is all hands on deck to help make those events successful. And so. Um, volunteers of, of all types and certainly uh, all different times commitments are welcome and certainly we appreciate their support. I understand you have a volunteer recruitment campaign going on. What can you tell us about the campaign? It's a great question. So uh, just as March Madness comes to an end, we're going to be launching a recruitment campaign for volunteers. And really the point of that is to b bring up that next generation of volunteers uh, to supplement uh, the amazing work that's already happening. Um, and as you and I both know, again, for that magic to continue, we need to start you know, bringing up that next generation of volunteers, that next generation of coaches, assistant coaches, and also those individuals are helping out with each and every one of those events. It's also an opportunity for us to raise awareness about the importance of giving back to community and in particular, Special Olympics Rhode Island. And so we're really excited about this campaign and we believe that everybody home, once they get a chance to hear, not just from myself and more importantly, our athletes, they're gonna be inspired to wanna to be a part of this movement with us. Nice. Thank you for joining us today. We'll be right back after these messages. Welcome back to Special Olympics Rhode Island Magazine. My name is Michael Bullock. We are celebrating the 30th anniversary of our uh, Special Olympics Rhode Island Magazine TV show. I've been part of the show since 2002. I originally started as, uh, as a camera person and then I became the, uh, the director of the show, which I am as of today. Now, some of my favorite memories uh, from the show was, uh, of course, getting to go to uh, Dublin, Ireland to cover the, uh, the uh, World Summer Games. Uh, this was the first World Summer Games they had outside of the, of the US and, uh, and it was a unique experience for me just to be able to travel around the world and, uh, and I, of course I had to get adjusted to the time difference because it was five hours ahead in, uh, in Dublin, Ireland. And I got to see the, uh, what the opening ceremonies were like at the uh, at the World Summer Games and just to hear from so many great people uh, at the opening ceremonies and of course one of the big names was obviously Eunice Kennedy Shriver and then of course the other big highlight was of course the the lighting of the cauldron and and getting to meet so many great celebrities but of course one I got to uh, meet was 
Muhammad Ali, the greatest boxer uh, of all time. I had a picture taken with him and it was just a unique experience. And uh, also our crew actually got to meet uh, Colin Farrell, uh, one of the big movie stars uh, that we got to see. So overall, it was just a great experience and uh, I definitely enjoyed it. My other favorite memory was uh, getting to go to cover the, uh, the USA games over in New Jersey back in uh, 2014. And of course, getting to interview some of the members of, of Team Rhode Island that was competing uh, that, that year. So, and some of my favorite interviews from the, uh, from the show, um, I gotta go with um, Magic Johnson. Uh, I actually interviewed him uh, when, when they had the Jeffrey Osborne uh, Celebrity Softball Classic at, uh, at McCoy Stadium. So just getting to interview him and of course, why he was there to su support the, uh, the uh, Jeffrey Osborne Celebrity uh, Softball Classic. And of course, also to uh, get to know about, what, about uh, the rivalry, of course, with him and the Lakers against the Boston Celtics. So just to get a unique experience uh, from him was uh, just an awesome experience for me. Um, my other favorite interview was, uh, was getting to interview Kevin Garnett of the, uh, of the Celtics at that time when our crew actually got to go to, uh, go to the training camp and uh, get to interview some of the players. Uh, and yeah, Kevin Garnett was definitely a, definitely a unique uh, interview for me. And uh, let's just say he was a little bit taller than me uh, when I got to, got to interview him. And also another one of my favorite memories is, uh, of course, when it comes to interviews is uh, interviewing Wade Boggs over at, uh, at McCoy Stadium. There was some special, he was part of some special night there and just to get to interview him was, uh, was definitely a great experience. Interviewing a, a baseball Hall of Famer who once uh, played for the Boston Red Sox. So, I mean, so many great memories, so many great uh, interviews that I had uh, when it comes to Special Olympics Rhode Island Magazine and, uh, and also getting a chance to know the, uh, the great crew uh, at, at the show. Not, and of course, I made a lot of friends with athletes who have been part of the show and of course, those that work uh, behind the scenes. So uh, yeah, congratulations on 30 years of, uh, of the show. So uh, we will be right back after these messages. Hi, welcome back to Special of This Land Magazine. Hi, my name is Mary Irons. And I have a lot of exciting events to share with you. On Monday, April 8th, Special Olympic College Unified Basketball Jamboree takes place at Chase Athletic Center at Bryant University at 6 p.m. On Thursday, April 11th, the Northern Area Swim Qualifier is happening at Providence College at 6 p.m. On Saturday, April 13th, the Northern Area Individual 10-Pin Bowling Qualifier is taking place at Bola Lanes in Cranston. There will be two sessions starting at 9 a.m. On Thursday, April 18th, the Southern Area Swim Qualifier is happening at Newport County YMCA at 7 p.m. On Saturday, April 20th, the Southern Area Individual 10-Pin Bowling Qualifier is taking place at Old Martin Lane in Wakefield at 11 a.m. On Sunday, April 28th, the Northern Area Games are happening at Bryant University. Arming Summary is at 10 a.m. We will see you next month for another great episode of Special Olympics Line of Magazine.